Heather McDonald has got the juices scoop. When you're on the road, when you're on the go, Juicy Scoop is the show to know. She talks Hollywood tales for real life, Mr. Sigmund, serial data, and serial sister. You'll be addicted and addicted fast to the number one tabloid real life podcast. Listen in, listen up. Woo woo. Heather McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. Oh, I've got so much Juicy Scoop for you today. Going to cover a lot of hot topics, and then I have a great interview with a fabulous matchmaker, Adam Cohen, and he's got tips for everybody that's looking for love. He matches for gay couples as well as straight and everything for everyone, and uh, we go through different Bravo celebrities and who they should date, but first let me get through all um, the hot topics. Remember to go to heathermcdonald.net to join Patreon. That's where all the personal stuff about my life is, and as well as all the juiciest stuff. And also at heathermcdonald.net is where you get the tickets to my shows, which I'm doing a live Juicy Scoop in Sacramento on September 29th and in San Francisco on September 30th. heathermcdonald.net. Let's go. Well, there's been all this talk about Joe Jonas and his wife, Sophie Turner, and it has been announced. I'm going to skip over to this part. She did finally put out a definite announcement. They are unfortunately getting divorced. You know, she's 27. He's like 32. They're very young. They have two small children, two girls, a three and a one-year-old. And she put on her Instagram statement from the two of us, after four wonderful years of marriage, we have mutually decided to amicably end our marriage. There are many speculative narratives as to why, but truly this is a united decision and we sincerely hope that everyone can respect our wishes for privacy for our children. Well, I can understand why this would be hard when there's a lot of people speculating what is really going on. Um... And, and there's a lot of reasons why people break up or stop being friends or whatever. But some of the things that have come out in the way that it was reported, um, I thought was a little biased in whoever ever was giving out the news or reporting it. And a couple of the things that came forward was, you know, were they actually, was this even true when we first got the, the oh, they're breaking up, it, but there wasn't a definite. And people were confused because on her Instagram um, on uh, um, right here, August 14th, she's kissing his hand. She's wearing a cute re green dress and she does a slideshow of being at the Jonas concert. So, you know, then he wasn't wearing his ring. Then he was wearing his ring. And there were also reports about how he's caring for the two kids while he's on tour and she's not. And of course, she was in Game of Thrones. I didn't like that they mentioned that like, oh, he's the main caregiver, even though he's on tour. You know, with working couples, it, there shouldn't be such like a, a mom shaming type of situation. Um, we don't really, again, we don't know the situation. We don't know if that was for, you know, one long weekend because she was doing something and, the, you know, he was like, oh my God, I want the kids on tour with me this week. We don't really know what that was. Um, also, there was a talk of her, you know, partying and, you know, doing shots. Well, she was doing that right here. Sophie Tur Turner spotted downing shots at a bar days before Joe Jonas filed divorce. Well, there's also reports that they were celebrating a wrap of a movie they just did. And someone, you know, not even herself, someone probably filmed for their Instagram, like we all do, of people partying, you know, and then it's interpreted like, oh my God, what's this mother doing, doing shots? She's so thirsty. I don't even think she posted that. It could have been someone within her party and she wasn't going to be like, oh, don't post us. We're, we're celebrating the fact that we finished this movie. So the final thing that came out was today at, on TMZ was there's allegedly something on a ring cam that was the final straw for Joe Jonas to, in fact, file. Like, what kind of evidence could be on a ring cam that would make You'd say, we are definitely done. Did he see her come in the house with another person, another guy? Was she looking for her keys and cursing out her husband, like, you know, buzzed, like this mother, I told him to leave the door open. And he's like, that is it. I am done with this. Door. Like, I don't know. You know, we see so much video from ring cam stuff. Um, 
you know, where where a lot of evidence is picked up, whether someone's stealing a package or stealing your wife or um, or maybe she was just ripping on him. Maybe she was just literally talking about how she thinks his music sucks. I don't know. Oh, my God. Oh, thank God. if I have to go to another Joe Jonas concert and then, you know, and he happens to look at the ring camera and he's like, I thought you loved my music, Sophie. And she's like, well, you know what? I really didn't. And he's like, I think we're done, but I think we would co-parent beautifully. And she's like, I agree. I'll put out a statement today. Who knows? Okay, this Kanye West with his poor wife, Bianca, and I say poor because I really feel badly for this girl. I don't know what the hell is going on. We saw photos of her before she got with him, and she, you know, dressed differently, had long hair, had a career, was doing things. Now she has to walk around either barefoot or wearing really weird white pumps. She's wearing just a a body nylon suit, like nylons from the 80s, but all the way up around her boobs. She's got nylons on her head. She had to cut her hair short. He's dressed all weird. They were on. When I saw this a couple days ago, I did not realize what was going on because they said, oh, my God, here's a photo of Kanye in this um, water taxi in Italy with his pants down. I, I'm i so innocent. I'm such a good Catholic girl. I thought it was like he just had low pants on. You know how people, how guys wear their pants really low and like literally the belt is like almost right before their penis or like under their, actually under their ass cheeks. I just thought he was sitting there. He got up and his ass showed. That's what I thought. Then with further speculation, it appears that she seems to be down on her knees and there's an arm there. People are speculating that maybe she was doing a sexual favor for him. And of course, the taxi guy didn't know what was going on because he's driving the water taxi. He's not like, excuse me. But then the article said, but someone who was with them did know what was going on. Do you imagine you have to be the person with them? Like, oh, like, you know what? Like, if you're like Kanye's assistant and you're like, okay, I got this job like six years ago. And it was when he was with Kim and we got to go to the Met Ball and we got to do this, all this fun stuff. Then he said all these weird things and then he was running for president. Then they're getting divorced. We have to replace the marble eight times in the one bathroom in Hidden Hills. Like, I mean, I I highly doubt whoever is the assistant that had to witness this weird behavior, nakedness in Italy. I doubt that person has been around for very long because I can't imagine he can keep an employee no matter how much he pays them. Um, Anyway, so according to the TMZ, they um, are no longer welcome in Venice. They have been banned from the Venice Water Taxi Company, but I don't know that they've been banned from the country. We're hearing different things like, you are banned from Italy. I don't think that's the case, but I don't think they're supposed to be getting these water taxis anymore, which I'm sure they can afford their own boat if that's the kind of stuff they want to do. But um, also, this came from page six. They think that this is Kanye, but he like crashed some, allegedly crashed some cute Italian wedding. And he's wearing completely covered. The whole face is covered, all black. And the video is pretty funny, page six, where it seems like it's very awkward. Like he just shows up and he's kind of like, do you want a picture with me? And they're like, um, no, I, I don't know what was going on there, but I just thought that was sort of funny. Meanwhile, at the Beyonce concert, um, Kylie Jenner was seen having a romantic night out at the Beyonce concert with the Timothy Chalamet. And I, look, I was happy to see this. Whether this is a real relationship or not, we finally, they finally stepped it up a notch and gave us some PDA for the paparazzi to take a photo. Because as this has been going on for months, I felt like this is getting less momentum than Bethany's reality reckoning. Like, I was like, is this a real couple? I mean, like, I was just thinking about it the other day. I'm like, we don't see them. I feel like this has been dropping crumbs the way Kyle dropped cum- crumbs earlier with Morgan. And we w- nobody was really picking it up or really caring. I think everyone's just like, are you dating? I really don't care if you're dating, Kylie. Um, anyway, they showed lots of PDA and what was funny about it is that it was like, like all of a sudden she kind of is like, ha ha. And she sees the camera and she locks eyes with the camera and she's like, and she starts like kissing and go and rubbing each other. And so there were a lot of comments of like, did they call the paparazzi? Is this a planned thing? Of course the paparazzi is going to be at Beyonce. 
And um, so it's not like it was an obscure place. I mean, they know where the VIPs are and they know they're going to be photographed if they go to Beyonce. So I don't think they were calling them up like a certain, like like Tamara accused uh, Heather Dubrow of calling up a paparazzi to take photos of them while they are at Disneyland. Um, this was probably whatever, but it worked out because now we know, no, they are, at least they're kissing. They're definitely kissing because we saw them kiss. Um, so then here they are kissing and also uh, Travis Scott was there as well. The father of her two children and her longtime partner, though they are just co-parents now. And she made that clear many months ago, even before she gave birth to her second child. She did this long um, article with these really cool photos that was actually shelved because it was supposed to come out like the week of the Astroworld uh, horrible tragedy. And but in it, because some people grabbed it in it, they she was like, we're not a couple, but we are a family. Like we don't have, we don't practice monogamy. We don't, we don't think we're going to be together for the rest of our lives, but we are going to be a family for the rest of our lives. And, um, but Travis Scott has, it has this, so in one of his songs, they say his track Meltdown before going on to the rap um, that he says the former lover should try to find another flame hot as me, bitch. That's what he says in his song. So he was there as well. I don't really think he cares, whatever this is. Um, but then I was um, at a, a birthday dinner last night with my friend, and we were sitting at a booth. We were at Craig's, and um, uh, it was a birthday a dinner that we planned a month ago, and it was for um, Lala's birthday along with – and Josh Flagg was there because we're all good friends, and Logan and Leo. And I was sitting next to Logan, and Leo was just had his camera out, and then he, I, I don't even know if he was going to film anything, but he happened to capture this. And then I like had eye contact and then I just went and acted like I was kissing Logan, who is a gay man. So I'm not cheating. Um, but anyway, I was just kind of thinking that's what this sort of looked like to me. So whatever, we posted it. Um, speaking of, of love, Lakers owner Jeannie Buss, who I've met several times, and uh, Jay Moore, a friend of mine, they are in fact married and I've talked to them before, um, after she got engaged, and he's so in love with her. They're so happy. It was a very, very small ceremony. No Lakers were there. Um, they just did it on the beach. And, you know, he's been divorced and has a child. She, I don't know that she's ever been married. Um, I believe she doesn't have kids. And they've been a while, together for a while. And they're really happy. And um, I, I keep asking her to come on the show. She has such an interesting life story. And she's like such like a good spirited person. So hopefully she will come on Juicy Scoop. We'll, she can give us all the Juicy Scoop. And there's been so many TV shows and things in the works about the juiciness of the Lakers and her father and everything. So I think that would be really fun. But happy for them. Um, but no, I was not invited. So whatever. It's okay. Just come on Juicy Scoop. Okay, you guys. This is a very disturbing, sad story, but I have to address it. There is this YouTuber. She had a very popular YouTube channel. She made a lot of money on it, I assume, because she had lots of views, okay? And she was well-known. It was called Eight Passengers. I believe it's because maybe she has eight or six kids. She has multiple kids. She at least has five or six kids. And she's married. And she is Mormon. And she has been arrested for child abuse. Her name, so disturbing, her name is Ruby Frankie. And... um. It was called Eight Passengers, was the YouTube channel. She has been arrested on charges of aggravated child abuse in Utah. Police were alerted after a severely malnutritious, malnutritioned and wounded child climbed out of a window at their home and the child, and then they found a child in similar condition was found inside the home. Both the children have been hospitalized and the four minors were placed into child protective services and her eldest daughter and her sister's applauded the arrest and said it was long overdue. And the daughter has gone out on TikTok and social media to say, please go through my mom's YouTube channel and please collect any video that you think, you know, that you see that now makes sense that she's essentially an abuser, you know, like look at it. So many people have made really great videos putting this stuff together and showing it. I had seen this woman like in bits and pieces of things 
um, before the arrest and thought it was kind of weird. I didn't follow her channel, really know about it. But um, really, some of the awful things that she would do is um, it was she was very much about withholding food. And she would talk about it on her camera. She goes, well, um, it's my daughter's job to make her meal, uh, her lunch. And she didn't. So the school called and they were disturbed that she didn't have a lunch. And I was like, well, she's just going to have to go hungry. And there's nothing wrong with going hungry. They have responsibilities. Um, there's, I mean, I can't believe the stuff she would show. She had a teenage son that they're joking about how for his punishment, he had to sleep on a beanbag for like two months. Um, this other little child, she's holding her little favorite stuffed doll. And she said, if you cut, use your scissors to cut another thing in my home, everything in this home is mine. I will cut off the head of this doll. Do you like that? She posted this stuff. And people did report, like, I don't know if they reported to authorities, but there were people that were talking about how this was disturbing and they didn't understand why this mother was mothering this way and they didn't agree with it. They, She and the husband also did a video about how their son is um, everybody has to get out of the house at 18. The minute they turn 18, they're not allowed to live at the house. They're not expected to. And in fact, one of their sons, they sent off to one of those wilderness places. Sounds like kind of where Paris Hilton went, which is, you know, we know now is, I don't believe the greatest situation for kids ever. And they're saying, you know what? They only are going to have the clothes on their back and a few items to survive. They don't even have a tent. They'll have to, uh, and, you know, and that way they'll get these life skills they need. Well, we're in America, like, really? Most people don't have to live in the freaking woods without a tent, you know? So this is not a life skill, I believe, in teaching a kid at 18. I don't agree with it. Um, but these kids that they found were severely abused, according to the report. They were had duct tape on them. They were, um, you know, laceration, starving. The kid that got out of the window was begging, ran out, escaped, and was begging for food and water. And, you know, I've been talking about the the fact that these parents, even when they're not, oh my God, physically or abusing these kids or withholding food, that they're profiting off of their children. They're getting all this ad money. And I believe it's Indiana is the first state to pass a law saying that you're not allowed to do this, that you, you know, more have to do it just like if your child was on Disney, you can only take 10 or 15% of their money. That's the Coogan law. There's going to be more laws about parents profiting off using their minor children in their videos, in their YouTubes to sell, to get ad space on those YouTube videos, to sell products. And the fact that you're being, it's, it's humiliating enough and scary enough as a child when you do mess up and you're being... She's like, you're getting a tongue lashing, but then to see the camera. And she would even say, oh, this isn't even bad, as bad as it could be because the camera's here. And the fear that these kids have, and then you just, you know, little bits that people are collecting from her stuff that she all put out there where the child is just, you know, um, coming home from school and they're just broken. They're scared to go home. They say, mommy, you're scary. Like it is heartbreaking and Thank good this was this was found out. And the dad has um, retained an attorney. The kids are in child protection services, but his attorney and he are fighting to make sure that he um, retains custody and that they stay in his care. But I mean, I don't know about that. Okay. Sister wives. Okay, Sister Wives was so good on Sunday. Because we finally got to see Janelle come forward and have this blown out fight that was like very juicy with her and Cody. To remind you, Janelle is the second wife and Christine, wife number three, has already left. She is currently engaged to somebody else. We saw her break away last season and now we're watching this. And I believe this is maybe filmed maybe around November because they're talking about Christmas. And then, of course, Robin is wife number four, and she is still in this, but she's not happy either. She's like, I did not sign up to be a monogamous single wife and have to deal with this asshole every single day, every single night, his moods, his rules. I thought I could be part of a TV show, have some sister wives, give my kids a big family, and like deal with them two, three nights a week. That's what I thought. 
it's not what I wanted. So meanwhile, Janelle is they're arguing about how her grown sons mainly don't want to deal with him and how he treated them during COVID with all his rules and really giving them no attention for it appears for the last few years since he married Robin. He's much more into her three kids that she brought into the marriage and then they have two little ones together. So in it though, they're fighting and he's blaming her. He said, you turned the kids against me. And she's like, no, I never did that. And he he's like, and then she goes, you gaslit me. He goes, you only are using that word gaslight because I'm using it. You stole my word. And she goes, oh, no, I was planning on using this word gaslight before you ever came over to this apartment. I was. That was my favorite part of the scene. The apartment that she's in because she finally realized I can't live on this trailer and we're never going to build on this land. And what's really sad about they they had the best situation in Las Vegas. They had four homes. Each wife had her own home with her own kids on a cul-de-sac in Las Vegas. And and um, Cody wanted to buy this land and build on this land in Flagstaff, Arizona called Coyote Pass. And they they have a loan and basically they're probably going to lose everything. Whatever they paid for the land, they're going to like, they never built because they didn't pay off the loan and someone's carrying the papers. It's a big mess. And sadly, Janelle realizes and she says it, I'm 50 years old, and I. she said, oh my heck, like I have nothing financially. She was the wife that worked the whole time and put all the money into the pot while Christine helped watch their combined kids together. Then Robin comes in, and Robin and Cody take all the money that she's been working for, and they buy a home while she rents and Mary rents and... Christine was renting. Now Christine is like, goodbye. I'm taking the little bit of profit I have from some property. And I got the heck out of here and I went back to Utah. But Janelle is left with just a rented apartment. The, the property is not in her name. She is not legally married to Cody. It's a nightmare. So Janelle, if you'd like to come on Juicy Scoop and tell your story, and then afterwards, everyone will love you. And then you can start your own podcast and, you know, and whatever we can work out what that podcast will be, then you can hopefully be a successful woman and get your own property and do your own thing. But I, again, just, it is shocking. And I've said this, none of them are living the high life though. None of them. I mean, they have decent cars. The house that Robin and he live in appears to be okay. It's on a couple acres, but it's not like they're utilizing the acres. They're not like, they don't have like a tennis court and a gorgeous pool. It's just kind of like, woodsy and brown. It's nothing great. And the show has been going on for seven, I think this is the 17th or 18th season. So I do think like, mm, maybe these people do need a union. But I think the problem with the reality show union that's been talked about, that has, like I said, the least momentum of any movement I've ever seen, I think part of it is because I don't think this is something America really cares about. I don't think America is like, wow, you know what? That girl in season five of The Bachelor really got screwed over. She um, drank too much because there was too much alcohol on set. And she came off like an asshole. And now she's having trouble getting married and occasionally having trouble getting a job. So, Bethany, where do we go to pick at the... F like, I just think it's one of those things. It's the same thing with Burning Man where I kind of feel like people weren't overly upset or feeling scared for these people in Burning Man because they were like, we live off the land and we can live for four more days because it's so muddy and there's so much rain that came. I would never want to go to Burning Man. I mean, it seems absolutely horrible. I've told you my camping story when I was a baby that has been told to me over and over and it pro definitely scarred me and made me never want to camp. I've talked to my one friend who did escape, but he's been going for 27 years and he's like, Oh, don't even worry about it. We were in this fabulous, we have this, our camp includes chefs, cooks, you know, generators, air conditioners, beds, sheets. It's not, so there's, there was this level that you could pay for or whatever, and they were perfectly fine. And then he had a truck that he was able to escape on Sunday out of there and was like, I'll just leave my camper and come back in two weeks because I have a nice home somewhere else. And it really felt like kind of the haves and the haves nots. And then it really made me think like, my God, you know, and 
and then the stars like um Chris Rock was there and Diplo, I think, or maybe some other DJs, they were t- able to escape. They were able to walk and then they some fan picked them up and they were like, goodbye. And they got out and all the, the wealthiest people got to leave. And the other people are like, whatever, you know, I can stay longer. I have a little cot. They don't even seem to mind it. It seemed like. And um, but it did remind me like when the earth really goes to shit. It's going to be the really wealthy people that are like, oh, yeah, we're just going over to this other planet and bye, bye, go wallow in your mud. Like it was, but it was definitely something like, I just think it's one of those things where we're not focused on that these people really are suffering that much and we don't really care. Okay. Now let me get into this next story. Diddy, as you know, has all these artists and He, according to TMZ, has turned down nine figures because he chose to give bad boy artists their publishing rights back. This is very, very interesting that he did this. Titty chose to do the right thing over money. And the fact that he turned down such a fortune to make his former artists have control of their own music. So everyone thinks it is so great and really important Um, we're told that the rationale for this boils down to wanting to revolutionize the industry with this to empower artists and to switch up the dynamic. So, of course, when something like this happens, um, people start to speculate. And there are some interesting theories and things that have emerged on the internet. Um, This one is from Marka.com. And you know, there's been stories that um, there was some grooming going on and some crazy all-male parties. Jamie Foxx, there's a video of Jamie Foxx talking about it involving Puffy at the time. And these are just videos and stories. They could be manipulated. They might be, you know, all alleged stuff. But um, When I was at Lyricist Lounge, which was a show I did on MTV, which was sketch but mixed with rap, I also heard of these stories of these all-male thing parties going on with rappers and young, younger artists, maybe very young. Um, So I, but I only heard like rumblings of it, and I was like, "What?" And then we'd like do a sketch or whatever. So. I have no evidence of this, but there is a lot of chatter on the internet that maybe this, because there are these people talking about this stuff that could be, you know, very negative rumors or possibly true, that that was the motivation to um, do this really great deed and put the put that to rest and have people be like, well, who cares? Look at this great thing he did. Don't bury that. Don't bring that up. Nobody cares. Nobody wants to know. And, you know, if nobody's actually coming forward, which appears nobody's coming forward, then this just might be, you know, rumors and alleged stories to make someone look bad who's actually doing something great. So there, there's the juice behind that. Now, um, remember this awful Real Housewife story. This um, is – there's lots of stories on this, but this is coming from all about the Real Housewives um, Instagram and – So let me, right now, so Real Housewives of New Jersey, old cast. There was Caroline Manzo and her sister, Dina Manzo. Not only were they sisters, but they had the same married last name because they married brothers. And Dina Manzo divorced that brother, and his name was Thomas. And she was engaged to somebody else, and there was this horrible attack that happened on her and her fiance, he's now her husband at the time. And they arrested Thomas Manzo for hiring this person to do this awful hit. And the person was named, um, hold on, um, John Perna is the one who did it. And they found out that John Perna was offered some discounts at the Brownstone, which is the dining hall and like area people have weddings that the Manzo brothers both owned for his wedding in Patterson, New Jersey. So in realizing that they did this research, he has been arrested. And right now um, he is um, trying to get a plea deal. He has pushed off this trial many times and he hired a new attorney just last November. 
Caroline Manzo, Dina's biological sister, did write a letter vouching for Tommy's character during all this time. And Tommy now has until November 17th to make an agreement with the prosecution for a plea deal um, because he faces up to 43 years in the slammer if convicted. He kept pushing off the trial and now um, supposedly he is going to try to do some type of plea deal for hiring or arranging for this guy to come and physically attack them both and break into their home. So it's really awful. And no surprise that Dina Manzo and Caroline Manzo are still not talking. Can't imagine why. Um, Britney Spears is not accepting social media promo deals despite potentially high payout from TMZ. I've talked about this. Would she, you know, why doesn't she do OnlyFans? I can see why maybe she doesn't. I think maybe she has explored it. I have heard that she has maybe um, looked into it, but then realized, ooh, what you really have to do, I don't want to do that. Um, I thought, what about just making her Instagram subscription? That's what I think would be a great idea. But, you know, she has her book coming out. Supposedly, she's got music coming out. So hopefully, she'll be back on top soon. I don't know. The videos are crazy. They're getting stranger. She keeps putting them out. But the I'm dying to hear, hear about the book. Um, I have heard some people have read it, and they just said it's like ground, like you're gonna die. It's so juicy, and um, it's she's written every word. It wasn't like someone was a ghostwriter. So maybe she's just like, I don't need this, and I don't want. And and also doing, let me say, doing sponsored ads for social media and stuff. They're not like you can just. Well, I did just see a clip of. Of, of Gwyneth Paltrow talking about seed, which I love, um, this little pill that you take to keep you like regular. It's a probiotic and prebiotic in one. Um, and she's doing it. And like her kid is like making a latte and you hear like the steamer in the back of the kitchen and she didn't even redo it. Now, I don't know if she wasn't paid for that or what, but usually you really, when you do these ads, you have to read the content. You have to say it right. Then you send it to the company and then they say, oh, Yes, but don't compare it to this and do this. And you, so it's not like it's, it's not as easy as it looks. And being that she doesn't like to take direction um, or for, you know, for fear that all of a sudden she feels controlled, that's why she's like, I do my own dances, I post them myself. I think that's why she's like, no, I, it's just too much work for what the money would be. But if she was to say she loved something besides the Amazon clothes that she buys herself for $22 or her sheen designs, or wherever she gets them. If she was to say like she really liked something, I don't even know if that that would be the... So I don't even know if the offers have been... Yeah, I, I think if I had a big product, money or not, I really don't know that I want Britney Spears to be the spokesperson right now. Maybe in the future, but right now, I don't know about her endorsing something that would make people go, if Britney loves it, I want it. I think... She's probably better off just saying no and let me just spin around and have a coffee or Red Bull or whatever. Um, this was interesting. Miley Cyrus said she did not make a dime on her bangers tour. She said she spent so much on – this is when she was humping teddy bears. Do you remember? This was like the first time we saw that she seemed real horny and bisexual. Which she is bisexual. She said that. But this was like the first time she was doing this is when she was wearing the little – Things in her hair, I remember because I did an impression of her when I was on Chelsea lately and I wore the outfit and I humped a teddy bear. And um, anyway, she had these enormous special effects. She was obsessed with the movie, The Truman Show with Jim Carrey. So she would leave out of, <laughs> wait, she would leave out the way that Jim Carrey like ended the movie. She would do that on her show and she had a, oh, she flew out of a giant dog or something. Anyway, all this stuff left her with no profits, even though it brought in $70 million in ticket sales. There's probably a lot more to unfold besides her just having really large teddy bears on stage and going into a dog. I don't know. But myself personally, when I did my special in 2014, my first stand-up special, it was sold to Showtime and then it was sold to Netflix and I still did not make one dime because... Every time it got sold, I'd say, well, where do I get a check now? And they say, oh, no, that hasn't covered all the expenses of your of producing the stand-up special. I didn't have teddy bears. I had a mic 
and I had myself and I wrote all the material and even then I didn't get a dime. But this is a very common story for comedians as well as um, musicians. So there you go, girl. I feel you. 2014. Not great. Erica Jane's residency, though, you can go see it. The girls were all there. Erica Dorit and um, Lisa Renner, who's no longer on the show, they all partied. They all had dinner. They all had fun. They all supported Erica Jane. And um, I heard her singing, and she does a couple covers. And she's like, because I am living in a material world, and I am just a material girl. Anyway, the crowd went crazy. Lay loved it. And um, according to, what is this, to buy wig drama. This is a great um Oh, buy wig hello drama. It's a very funny Instagram account. Anyway, you can get tickets for as low as seven dollars. I say go for it, check it out. I think it's on StubHub. Listen, it is hard to sell tickets these days. It really is. Make a girls' weekend go to or a husband weekend or a boyfriend weekend, whatever. Um, it looks like it's fun, and you know, the, oftentimes we just got to get people in the seats. They make the money off the drinks or whatever. She's she's working her ass off and she's having fun and go, you know, if that's what you're into, by all means, go. Of course, I'm going to be there November 4th at the Venetian, but my show is already sold out. And um, Brandy and jo Julie, Brandy and Julie will be joining me at that show during that weekend, which happens to be, just happens to be BravoCon. So I hope you got to that because that's sold out. Um, Taylor Armstrong looks so good. She cut her hair short and the bangs really work for her. Oh my God. She looks amazing. And um, she just talked on Kyle and Mauricio's breakup, says she loves them. Who knows? I really think we're going to, I think they're keeping it quiet, but I definitely don't think they're together. And I definitely think they're getting divorced, but we're going to be able to watch it on the show. Um, the Murdoch trial, a little uh, update on the Murdoch trial. He is asking for a, this is the, the man that killed, convicted of killing his wife and son. He is asking uh, for a new trial because they said this this clerk, supposedly they're, they're in their complaint saying that this person was telling the jury, don't listen to what he says, don't believe him, tampering with the jury, and that this person has a book coming out or going to work on a book and also went with three jury members to the Today Show. So it sounded like, it sounds like a, thir a thirsty clerk may have ruined it for somebody. Now I just want to clear up a real juicy, crazy story about my own life that ended up going public. So I had this friend and you know, when you have a girlfriend and you're um, getting ready and you realize, oh shoot, I forgot to bring earrings. She goes, here, borrow these. So I put the earrings in and they were gold. These ones that I'm wearing right now, um, I wear them all the time, but they are not real. They are diamond hoops. They are not real. I think they cost like $90. I wear them all the time. I thought this is what these earrings were. There was no conversation of don't lose them. They're expensive, nothing. Um, so I had them in my possession and I was at a, um, I was traveling and I was dancing at a restaurant, which they encouraged dancing at in St. Bart's. And somebody was filming it and posted it in our group. And I was entertaining the crowd by being a spaz and dancing like I do. And I did not realize until after it was posted that someone said her earring fell. And being that it was my friend's earring, though I didn't know they were real, I felt bad. Of course, I wanted them back. Also, they were cute earrings. I called the restaurant. They didn't find him. I went back to the restaurant. I sifted through the sand the best I could. I couldn't find it. She wrote me. I went through all of my text messages and everything. And it was only one little thing like, did you find my earring? Laughing, crying emoji face. Nothing like, shit, those were really expensive earrings. Did I not tell you? So anyway, um, on a public radio show, it was said that I am a thief that I, I could be convicted of a felon for stealing these earrings because they are so expensive that it, it elevates the crime to the felony level and that this woman should sue me for stealing her earrings. Um, this was the first I ever heard that they were of any kind of value more than like maybe $100. Since the earring incident happened, that was, I went through all my texts. There was no other mention of it's sentimental. It's this much. What are we going to do? How can you pay me for this? We 
continued to text throughout these all these months. She went to my birthday around June 14th. No mention of the earring. I picked up the entire meal for my um, for the five girlfriends that were there. Um, no mention of the earring until this was on a public radio show accusing me of being a jewelry thief, a a comedian who steals jewelry from friends. Um, so I immediately wrote her. I said, this is the first time hearing that they were of such value. Had I known, I would have given you this money sooner. How much were the earrings? She said, I bought them at a store in La Jolla. I think they were about 2700 to 3000 or 3000 I said, a check for $3,000 is going in the mail. It was mailed yesterday, Tuesday. Um, so hopefully she, by the time she's listening to this, she has received it. It will absolutely clear. And that is the case. But I, I personally have never lent jewelry to anybody that was any value. The only time someone has ever lent me real jewelry was on my wedding day. My friend lent me her diamond cross. Noelle did. And I was very nervous about it. And I, I believe um, I didn't even take it on my honeymoon. I put it like in my parents' like safe before I left because it was her because it was expensive. I didn't want to wear this on a trip. I would have never traveled with anything of that value that wasn't mine ever. And had I known that I lost that earring, it would have ruined my trip that I if I knew it was that expensive. So what I find interesting is I think that what happened in this particular case is she chose not to tell me how expensive it was because this was a planned attack on my reputation and the business that I've built from scratch for eight years. This was a planned attack on me to publicly try to destroy me. And that is the only thing they have on me. I, they don't have anything else. I don't, I will get in more of all the things I don't do and all the things that I believe that this stemmed from. But I just wanted to put out here that uh, no, didn't know the earrings were expensive, was not trying to avoid paying them back. And for some of the the men out there that maybe don't understand how borrowing jewelry and assuming that it's fake and not lending your real jewelry to anybody and not even asking someone to, I would not even ask to borrow the jewelry, again, with the cross that was offered to me um, on my wedding 23 years ago to the man I'm still married to. So, you know, and um so yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty devastating to hear that being said about yourself, and um, I just wanted to clear that up. But if I would compare this to something, I'm like, it's like if you're golfing with your buddy and you say, "Oh, hey, borrow my putter," and then after a few beers, you put your putter in your in your golf bag. The guy never asked for it again, and then all of a sudden you're driving around your car and you're hearing on the radio that you stole his gold plated putter and never gave it back when there was no conversation really about it and certainly not a demand for money nothing nothing so just so you know that's well, that was my juicy public story that happened this week and um for more about it you go to heathermcdonald.net and click on patreon and now for all you single people that would like to get some tips and figure out how to find the love of your, love of your life listen to this fun light an interesting conversation about matchmaking with Adam Cohen. Thanks. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. We have a juicy one. We have a hot new matchmaker setting the world on fire, Adam Cohen. Welcome to your first time at Juicy Scoop. We are going to be having a lot to talk about. Give I, it to me. I am so excited to be here with the queen of pop culture herself, Heather McDonald, let's get into it. Relationships, dating, sex, and everything in between. Bravo let's go. We're going to help a lot of Bravo celebrities. Yes. You and I have a lot of suggestions for our single Bravo friends. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So tell me a little bit about your your company yes. and what you guys do. Yeah. So I've been in the dating and relationship world for 14 years. 14? Now, wait a minute. I know I look really young, but 14 years. How old are you? I Can you say? I'm in my 30s. So when you started I'm as a teenager, you started 30s. as a dating expert in Basically, your teenagers? Yes. I was a grad student. I created my first dating website at the age of 21. Really? In 2008. So now you're going to do the math, I know. But anyway, wow, that's really cool. And then I started working for all these different dating apps, running them, running product, running marketing. And then I ended up working for Bumble for 
a while. So um, do you are you friendly with Whitney? Uh, Whitney? I know Whitney very well. We worked very closely together. Uh, I'm very close to her mother-in-law. You are? Yes. I know her husband. Yeah, met Michael. her husband a couple yeah. times. We were on some intimate trips together. Oh, good. Stories for another time because those are other yeah. NDAs. Those are NDAs. Yeah, but I mean, I... I I hope I can say that I'm friends with her mother-in-law. I think I can say it. Yeah. Okay. Well, you said it. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so it's happening. Yeah, yeah. So I ended up starting my own company called Smore, which was the world's first anti-superficial dating app. So imagine you're on a dating app, but you're not judging people. They're not judging you. You're getting to know them. And the more you chat with them, the more of them you see. So for people who don't want to be judged right away and want the actual conversation to take more than 30 seconds... They would download S'more. They would use our app, and we Does also. Does that still exist? So I sold my company oh, okay. to a company called Talkify. So for your listeners who know Talkify, they're the largest matchmaking company in America. So traditional matchmaking, but also they're launching the first ever matchmaking app coming out this winter. So everyone will be able to take advantage of true matchmaking. I mean, I truly feel like, first of all, you know, none of this. What it, the only thing that existed for me. You're going to die. <laughs> what? Was great expectations. What? Yes. This is so long ago. Tell me. So I was like 25 and I always knew I want to get married and have kids. And I was just like, I, I feel like if I keep going at this rate of dating people and not finding anyone special or whatever, um, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be too old and it's going to be that difficult. So... There was this, I was like, I want to do this thing, Great Expectations. Now, this is how old it was. You go to this place and you spent a lot. You'd pay a fee. And then you would do a video what? and talk about your life. And then you you would go in there and they'd be like, hi, Heather, these. And I didn't realize that I was maybe like the youngest and most normal person doing it. <laughs> I had so many people wanting to date me. I couldn't believe oh, it. Oh, my God. And so then- it kind of became overwhelming because then you were supposed to like, it was almost like a library and you'd go and you'd take a video tape out and then you'd have to watch them. Oh, I love this. And so finally I was like, this is too much for me. It's overwhelming. So I said to the girl, I'm like, do you know any of these people? Can you give me like three? Yeah. So I look at three and one's a doctor and one's like a pretty cute guy that's yeah. like closer to my age. So I did date some people, but it then- It feels like you're giving me a sperm bank story. Yeah. Right? So like I go dated, and flip the book. Right. It was a little yeah. bit like that. Like it was that. And then anyway, none of them worked out. And then I kind of was like, screw it. It was a weird thing. And people that would go on the dates are like, why are you doing this? Like, you don't seem like you'd have trouble. I'm like, well, I want to find people that actually on the road to like getting married, having yes. kids, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And being comedian, being from LA- the people that I were meeting were great material for me. Like every date was like a, a good three minute new bit for my yeah. standup, but wasn't turning out. So getting back to what I think is interesting now is I do believe there is going to be more of a movement, though I do think the apps and everything are great. And so many people I know have met their, their person on the apps. But Whether, after five years of being on them. Well, I, I don't know. Everyone yeah. has a different story. Yeah. But I do think the matchmaking world – it's going to become more and more something that now people go back to like wanting to not rely on the apps to actually have to like force themselves out or have. Yeah. I think it's cool that a lot of the apps also have like in live meet and greets yeah. where they're like events. Yeah. Events. I think that's really things. smart. Yeah. And then I also have joked about it, but I am serious. I would like to create something. Maybe I could do it with you. What? Tell me. Like modern day. Um, Parents arranged arranged marriage. Okay, that's a TV show, and we'll think about that after okay. this after this podcast. Because when I yeah. <laughs> talked about it briefly to my sons, I'm I'm like, would you ever care if I found you the girl, whatever? And they're like, not if she's you know, as long as she's hot, whatever. Who cares? And I'm like, you know, look, it shouldn't just be reserved for certain cultures, is what I'm saying. Totally, because you find like minded grandparents to be. What do I see my life as a grandparent? My friend and I would like to go on cruises together. We are fine with a nanny. We also want to be super into the kid's life. We're not over. We would like our kids to get together or you find someone. Like in my Juicy Scoop community, because my boys are 20 and 17, I've got women all the time being like, my girl is 18. 
what if we were mother-in-laws oh together? And I'm like, I'm telling you. <laughs> you can do it. We you can, can do, do it, it because these kids aren't as social as they used to be. And it's sometimes it's like awkward or so whatever. True. So true. And we need to help them yes. in this post-COVID, post-tech world. To they still need to match up enough with all these apartments that I are agree. being built as single dwellings. Yes, we do need to get people together, fall in love, and I agree. make a partnership. I agree. I you know, agree. I agree. And I also look. I worked for dating apps for so many years. Yeah, I know everything there is to know about a dating app. Matchmaking is new to me, and matchmaking is very impressive because if you look at where all these apps are going. A lot of people now, my generation, millennials, have been on them for ten years, eleven years. And yeah, they started as like eighteen, right? Eighteen, yeah. and we're and you know, millennials are the most single generation in the history of America. Of course. And yeah. is it a coincidence that we all use dating apps? And so, mm. when someone tells you there's a million fish in the sea, if the other person that you saw on a date wasn't perfection, swipe again. There's literally, literally an app called Plenty of Fish. Right. And so. We start to treat people like they're not human. We start to treat them like they're objects. And look, it could be very fun. They work great for casual encounters. It's harder for them to work for proper relationships because at the end of the day, the technology facilitates what the humans are wanting. And if two people aren't really high intent, then the outcome is not going to be what you're looking for. Yeah. And so when you think about matchmaking, when you go to a matchmaker, it's because your intent is really high. So your success rate oftentimes is like eight to 10 times higher. Right. So if you are sick and tired of swiping through these apps and having these pointless conversations that lead to mediocre dates, bad flings, and then you feel bad about yourself, get yourself into Talkify, at least into the database, or hire a person because every single date will be amazing. So um, I do think that's really interesting. Now, what about the fact that, you know, girls that are hot can yes. join this for free or very little money and someone who is like a Patty Singer, millionaire, matchmaker, whatever, they pay. How Does that still exist where it's like, you know, so actually you can negotiate your price is what I'm saying. Yeah. So with Talkify, so. Look, matchmaker, matchmakers do different things. We are actually a relationship wellness company. So let's think about what that means. So for us, anyone can join our database. We're going to vet you. We're going to make sure that you're a proper person. We don't want to have any any kind of scam artist associated with our company. But for 100 bucks a year, you enter our network and you have the ability to be matched with some of our clients. Our clients who have their own private matchmakers and date coaches, they run the process. So the matchmaker will sit down with not Heather McDonald, but Heather McDonald's sister yeah. and say, hey, single sister, what are you looking for? Let me become a very good one of your friends and get to know who you are, what makes you tick, and then scour America to find the best people for you. Now, I have a question with the dating coach, yes. whatever. Um, you know, I do think there's certain guys and girls for that matter. And Patty Stanger would do this a little, little bit. You know, she's a friend of both of ours yes. back in the day of her show. And some people thought it was harsh. Yes. And but like, I do believe that sometimes someone just wasn't raised with a sense of style or wasn't or even based on where they're coming from. Now they've got a few bucks, but they they don't know the etiquette of, you know, fine dining or whatever, like a pretty woman. Yes, yes, like, yes. do you provide some of that of like, dude, let's go shopping, totally. like a queer eye for the straight guy or yes. queer eye for queer so eye or whatever. Yeah. Like, you know, that kind of help of like, let's get you some proper bedding. Let's up your apartment. <laughs> let's let's clean get it. you. Yeah, let's get Hygiene. you. Let's get you some clothes. Let's build your confidence away because. Maybe you didn't have a girlfriend in high school or college. Maybe you were that person that played video games on Friday nights, but you're really smart. Yeah. And you have a lot to offer because you're like a nice, great person. And you literally need like a socialization class. I think, first of all, I love Patty Stanger. I think yeah. that she made the industry much more mainstream. I think that I'm so excited what, what Netflix is doing with matchmaking and making it a trend. And so many different shows are now coming online about matchmaking, which is more intense dating mm -hmm. instead of just hot abs on a beach. Look, yeah. we all love watching hot abs right. on a beach, but we also want to know how to get into relationships, how to be successful in relationships. So in terms of what we do, which is different, look, any matchmaker, any good matchmaker, let's put it that way, should be able to get you on a pretty good date. Here's the thing. If you're not ready for love, if you're not ready to embrace someone else because you're carrying baggage, there's weight of a past relationship, there's trauma that you haven't dealt with, there are things about you that you need to work on, You, even if that, date, that person's amazing, it will not work out. So at Talkify, you get both a matchmaker to find you love and a coach to get you ready for love. 
And then once we find you the love, we maintain it as well. So we're thinking about the entire, you know, beginning to end of someone's relationship, hopefully never ends. But you know, as someone who's married, and I'm also married, that relationships, everyone thinks the hardest part is finding love. It's not. Yeah. It's staying in love with that person and make sure and making making sure that it works long term. And that requires a coach. And so we're normalizing this just like mental health. Yeah became normalized with COVID. Now is the time where we're talking about, guys, relationships are really hard. Finding real love is really hard, but we can work together, we can share tips. And I think that's why Talk Vice is so different. So, okay, let's talk about some people that we, in our Bravo world. Yes. Um, let's start out with um, Lala. Yes. Kent, yes. Now she is a good friend of mine. Yes. She, you know, when she was with her ex, the father of a child, that was not her typical type. So now they're broken up, and now we see on her show that she dated her original type, which is, you know, a little edgy, tattooy, younger, <laughs> okay. kind of sexy, whatever. Yeah. Um, now she's like, you know, I just, you know, is possibly on a journey just to have another child by herself, which is totally fine, yeah. and I don't think that's a bad idea. Yeah. You have this infinite amount of time, as at least as a woman – you know, if you want to carry your children and so, you know, and you want your kids to be close in age. Yeah. So you maybe don't want to wait for the guy. You want to get your family and then the guy comes later. But regardless of whether she has the second baby or not, who do you think, what what would you suggest for her? Wow. So I don't know her personally. And I think yeah. that it's really important to have a friend like you chime in. Yeah. Uh, I think that, you know, when you're in the limelight, sometimes you, I think you could be one of two ways. A lot of celebrity clients that we have, and the, or friends that I know that are using matchmakers, there is something to be said for having another partner who's also in the limelight, right? If you're looking to get attention, that's gonna get you max attention. That's also max pressure on your relationship and some sort of competition for love. Um, in her prior relationship, they were in the same industry, but there was still some sort of competition, um, I think I would say in a way. It was kind of interesting because it was like he – was you know successful but behind the scenes yeah and then she was you know very out there as a reality star and you know but then what what was discovered later is i didn't know that originally he was like an actor kid mm -hmm. and so i'm like i think he really loved the limelight and i think he oh, loved being on course. the show with her and and then even when they did her podcast together i'm like I didn't understand why he was the co-host. Who's taking the lead on that show, right? Yeah, you yeah. think it would be so, her. <laughs> right. So it's like right. kind of an interesting thing. And so sure. and and oftentimes these housewives like Ramona and people like that. Vicky and her ex also. They her say podcast, they yeah. they get a guy and throw um, him on a podcast and call it a day. <laughs> right? But they get a guy and they and the guy will say, Oh, I've never watched the show. I didn't know who you were. Oh, isn't that great? You know, he doesn't want to be part of it, but then they kind of need them to be part of it to help their career. And also, if you refuse to be on the show, then we're gonna sp spend a lot less time together. But then some of these people oh, yeah. love the limelight. You know, someone that I think has maintained being a good husband, supporting the wife, but isn't thirsty in that way, is like Eddie, Tam Tamara's husband. Or Ken, Lisa Vanderpump's husband. Exactly. Right? Yes. That, those are two examples of they, they've played along, yeah. they've let their wife had their fights and whatever, They've they've also not been too much of a target, you know, of hate themselves totally. from the women. And then but they're also not like so into it that they they're, you know, they'd be happy not to show up, but they show up enough to keep their job to keep their wife happy, happy with the job. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Yeah. I look, I think so I need to meet her. I need to know her. I need yeah. to see what makes her tick. And I think that for Lala, it's it's about getting a person that totally and and with unconditionally supports you. Right. Someone that's going to love you from the bottom of their heart. Someone that's going to jump into a car and push you out of the way. That's the kind of person that she needs. She lives a very public life. It's been very challenging for her. And I think that she probably needs a businessman, a lawyer, someone that's not in her industry. I think she can have fun with people in, in entertainment. I think yeah. it could work, but I think that would be the exception. 
Yeah. I'd like to see her date a partner at a law firm, an amazing doctor, someone who doesn't really know what she does and is not mesmerized by the fact that she's on TV, but someone not that mesmerized, just but get a hoot feels. out of it. Yeah, like I like. I think it. it's cool. I think it's fun. Look at my 100%. sexy wife. Yes. Oh, we're going to this thing. Great. Oh, you don't need me to go and you want to go with your girlfriends? Great. Exactly. That's what you need. Exactly. Like someone that's not a weird, jealous person that's yeah. not, but that's like there when you need them, but also totally fine not to go. And yeah. someone who's stable, someone who's not, you know, no substances. I feel like she's, you know, yeah. came from a world where she's sober. Yeah. She needs to just focus on herself, focus on her baby. And if she wants to have another one, be supportive of that. There's so many great people in LA. They're hard to find. And that's why someone like Lala should be, I'll speak to her hopefully yes. sometime soon. <laughs> okay. So what do we think about? Well, I heard that you had a conversation with Aaron and Abe, who are my good friends. Okay. So Aaron <laughs> um, is one of the new housewives on Real Housewives of New York. Yes. The last episode that we saw, they were celebrating their 10 year wedding anniversary. Yes. Um, with a vow renewal or, or to do their vows for the yes. first time. A fabulous, gorgeous party. A lot of nice side tit on her. <laughs> Love her tiny body. Yeah. Um, one thing I said when I, when I recapped it was I, you know, a lot of my friends have been married for a long time. I have never been, and I have friends who have money and throw parties. I have never been to an anniversary party, vow renewal party ever, except when it's offered on a reality show. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I get why it's a great thing to do on a reality show. And it, well, I did this show called After Lately, and it was like a fake reality show that we did for Chelsea lately. It was kind of in the vein of like Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yes, yes, yes. And after the first season, um, I think I suggested this as like a storyline. We were going to have a vow renewal because I was like obsessed with housewives. My character was, <laughs> you know, and me too. Like it was an extension of myself, like an exaggerated version of myself. Yeah. And I was so fucking excited because I'm like, I would never pay for this myself. I would be way too embarrassed to have it. But if I'm going to do it for a TV show, how great to like wear a new, to wear a bride's dress again, all this stuff. Anyway, they ended up Did scrapping you? the idea. Okay. But I've yet to have it. And I do kind of think um, it obviously been a curse with the housewives, except for the Vanderpumps. They're the only ones that have done it, that have remained married. Yeah. And now for Aaron and both of them appear to have very strong relationships so far. Like when Ramona did it, it seemed weird. It was 17 years in. It seemed very much like she needed something line. to plan, yes. which I totally get. An event. Yes. And that's a fun event. It's glamorous. Totally. It's fun. You get to dress cute. Let's, why not celebrate your love? Why not have this around you? Like I totally get it. Or just do a fun anniversary party. Yeah. No one needs to do a vow renewal. Yeah. But I do think, I do think now you were there. I was at the party. <laughs> so how long were the guest speech? Because that did seem oh pretty God. torturous. And it does seem really weird that you would ask someone, now listen, it's one thing if we're going to celebrate this couple's love because she had cancer or whatever. They got through something super traumatic. Yes. They uh, And people could attest to the fact that this is the strongest couple they know. This is amazing. I can't believe you made it 10 years after what you guys are went through. This yeah. one went to jail. This one was in hospice. I don't know. Like, <laughs> But I was kind of like two gorgeous people A lot's happened. that have had a nice life, yeah. that have three healthy, great kids. Yeah. I think you can definitely celebrate the fun, but I was like, I, I would... Like, what are these speeches about? I are, they already have a very strong relationship. They really trust one another, but they're not the kind of parents they live. They go out. They have a nanny. They'll go on vacation with each other. They love, love, and no, love I think, having fun. I think, they're the best. I think she's way. the most normal that I've ever interviewed, yeah. and I think <laughs> they're the most normal. And I don't think that this vow renewal is going to be a curse at all. I just think it is sort of awkward to ask people to to do speeches. Yes. So the speeches like, were, yes. I think the speeches were relatively long. If I have to admit, I was one, I think one of the first people to get to this. I, I arrived punctually. Yeah. If you tell me to get there at eight, I'm there at eight. Was there any food? Again, I didn't see the episode, so I don't know what the no, whole context is. No, I'm asking is. you. You were there. Did there you remember eating? There was not a ton. Okay, because that was what one of the girls said, that she was very hungry. She wanted yeah. to go to Nobu because she was starving. Yeah. What? Who was? Who said that? Uh, sigh. Of course she would say that. Yeah, though, yeah. Because she needs to eat a lot of food, which is great. But then maybe eat before you come. You know what I mean? Like if you know that – if you've had one bad experience, don't repeat it a second time. Right. But I don't know her very well. But anyways, I think that they had tons of great alcohol. 
they That's have Abe and Aaron have the best friends. Yeah. They really come out. They really know how to celebrate. They really rally around them. There was yeah. some type of drama that happened during the speeches where they had to shift the cameras from the speeches back right. to the drama that was going on. Um, but I think that was it. I mean, there wasn't there was, that much drama. They were just talking about how long are these speeches going to be. But also there were, I heard there, yeah. The, okay. What did surprise me was when I walked with <laughs> my husband, he's like, what are all these brands? I yeah, what was that? So I, I first know. of all, if she got brands to pay for it, thank you. Thank for being a smart person. Yeah. Because we know now anybody that's followed this or listens to my show and hears interviews know that when you're on this show, they do not pay for your party, whether no. it's a one-year-old birthday or vow renewal. And I, and she's a savvy person that's been in a lot of businesses. I would be like, hey, if I was going to do that, I'd be like, hey, you know, Belvedere Vodka, yeah. would you like to be featured? <laughs> or my friend has a vodka company. Can we get a couple cases? Yes. My friend has a wine company. Can we get yes. And like, we'll make sure that, you know, it's featured on the show, yeah. and whatever. Um, so I thought that was really smart. I did not hate on that at all. And even if you aren't on a TV show and you're able to do that because you have a social media or you have a, a podcast that you can shout out, go for it. People want this advertising. A couple cases of wine to be mentioned on a show is yeah. 100% worth it and does not make you look... But if someone but wants I think to it takes ping, time to get people yeah. to get to that point. Right, to understand. But I feel yeah. like... I feel like Aaron and Abe came strong. They did their homework. Yeah. They came prepared. They knew what the assignment was. They knew that the show would probably cost them a lot of money in the short term. Right? Absolutely. You're getting your glam. You're getting totally. your this. They get paid nothing right. at the beginning. And so how do you make this into something that's worthwhile? And the whole thing is time. utilize it for for your businesses. Yeah. And she's got her hand in a lot of um, different businesses besides yeah. real estate. Well, she so, was like, supposed good for her. to also be our designer. We're renovating our kitchen. And she also renovates homes. Yeah. Aaron, yeah. She's a great business. So, okay. So, um, I love that. Let's talk about um, some guys. Yes. So Josh Flagg from Million Dollar Listing is yes. my friend. Yes. He is somewhat newly divorced, though he already got involved in a serious relationship, which is now over with. So is it? Who, who said that? Just to be clear. He told me that. Okay. Is that not true? No, it is. Oh, I mean, okay. that's what I heard too, I but I wasn't sure if it was public. Okay. No, he, broke, he and Bobby broke up. They got divorced. Yes. And then he was dating somebody else. Yes. I think it was somewhat serious. I had dinner with them and stuff, but it was the first relationship out of a marriage. Yes. So now I understand him to be single. Yes. And who do we think, what do we think for him? Yeah, so I know him also. I So I met him like 15 years ago when I was living in LA. Edith, his grandmother, and my aunt were on a committee together in some Jewish organization. So Fun. He, when he Amazing. was nerdy self on the first season of the show is when I met yeah. him. So I think, look, he is, he loves love. Yeah. He wants to get married again. And I think that he tends to not look very closely at the values that someone has. And he looks maybe for superficial things initially. And I think a lot of us do, right? A lot of us are, wow, you, you're good looking. I want to go on a date with you. Sort of like a dating app. Right. And I think that Josh may not be the best picker. Mm -hmm. And I think that's okay. I think a lot of us can be coached into learning how to pick better or giving people that you would not think would be your type yeah. a chance. And so, you know, my hope is that Josh seeks the advice of a matchmaker. I've been providing some advice to him and really starts going on great dates and having great experiences. And look, it doesn't always have to be a dinner or a lunch. It could be doing a fun activity. I think oftentimes we get in our heads about learning as much as we can and doing an interview on a date and then it feels horrible and you never wanna go on a second date. Well, instead of that, go rock climbing, You know, go hike Runyon, go do something, maybe for Josh, go do a house tour. Take this guy on a date to one of your homes and tell him why you love these different rooms and show him one of your passion projects or show him one of your vintage cars or take him on a tour of your amazing closet and all your cool vintage clothing. But I think that sometimes yeah, we get okay, in our heads, I like that. Right? I like that, you know, but I'm like, no, I don't, I th sometimes those things seem very reality show. But it is but like, true though. Like, let's go rock climbing. But I definitely think a hike, I definitely think like- Maybe Runyon's hard, or right? I, I it's 45 think, minutes. I actually think yeah. also just like, Hey, it's a, you know, do you like farmer's markets? Let's tool around, but then let's go to a nice lunch. Yeah. But let's kind of tool around just because it sparks conversation of sure. like, I don't even know what this vegetable is. How yeah. would you make it? I don't know. Just like a little more like of where you're just walking around a little bit, like, you know, window shopping type of stuff. I do think you get to know people like that 
a little bit better. Now, yes. I um, I do think with him, you know, I think he's great looking and I think he's so funny. Yeah. And I do think he's got a great heart. Yes. He somewhat identifies as an elderly Jewish woman, his soul, yeah. which I love, a rich older woman. And that's why he's BFS with Candy. Uh, exactly I get it. That. And I love that. So for him. So, you know, but he also <laughs> still has a young side. Yes. So I don't want people to think that he, even though he's so old Hollywood, yeah. old Beverly Hills, totally. which gets him all his best clients, like, you know, so you gotta find the right, the right balance. And opposites attract, but I also kind of believe in I do believe in the one of the original matchmaking site, and I never did it, but it always seemed like this one, it was the eHarmony, yep. where this that guy really believed that actually the more you have in common as far as like morals, what you want in life, what you like to do with your free time. Yep. I mean, I do think it would be really hard if if I married a super granola camping guy that mm -hmm. hates going to fancy hotels, mm -hmm. doesn't like luxury, Thinks I'm a snob. Yeah. No, I don't think we should get married. Right. <laughs> like I it's agree with that. It, you know there, there's it's fine that like that. we go skiing, and he's a much better skier than I am, and that's fine. I can go on the bunny runs. They for can sure. ski a lot. We can still meet for lunch. We can still have a wonderful time. You know, like well, I still think you can do these things and not be forced to do something you don't want to do. You know. I think Josh is also a nurturer. He wants to take care of a person. Yeah. And he wants to be the provider of a person. But then when you speak to him, he says, "Well, I want this other person to have passions in their life and have their own thing going." And we, I want. So he says the right things, right? He's saying the kind of person that he wants, but he's selecting people that don't represent the type of people that he says he wants. And right. I think that he should listen to his head to get on the date. And once he's on the date, open up his heart. And then also, so Ramona. Yes. Singer, she's got a boyfriend. Ooh, I don't know. Who's your boyfriend? She's got a boyfriend that everyone says is very nice and normal, has money, age appropriate. Wow. And, but she's very like protective because when she came on my show, and the legacy wasn't going to happen, but she did the girls' trip. She was like, you know what? She's like, you know what, Heather? I was really, it's been a really hard time you know, since Mario, Mario died. And you know, guys don't want to date. Wait, since Mario died? Life. So Mario died. Sorry, I forgot who died. You know, Mario broke up with me. Okay, yeah, yeah. Let me start again. So he goes, <laughs> it's been really hard. You know, like Mario and I, like we're friendly. We raised Avery, okay? I've dated some really great guys. But you know, it's really hard because like people don't want to be in the limelight. And I totally agree that agree with that, especially when you're dealing with the fact that she's on this show that's ridiculous. Yeah. But the people, her social circles and the people she wants to date are one percenters. 100%, 100%. And yeah. they, they don't want to be on these shows. They don't want their wealth exposed. They don't want to show off their boat. They're so wealthy. They don't wear labels. They don't like. Mm -hmm. So I'm. Um, so I think she's being very protective of that relationship. And I think it's a blessing that the legacy she didn't go for her. But you know what I think that we should, because we keep talking about all these Bravo people that yes. are single. And it feels like 50% of them are very single. I feel like maybe we need to just do a show and find them love because yeah. Luann, Luann is a great catch. Luann. Sonia Morgan, a great catch. So many of these women have so much to offer. But I think Sonia is a bit of a mess. I'll be honest. You know what? I, I, Her I'm, daughter I'm is saying, phenomenal. All their kids are great. Phenomenal. I just met Victoria. Yeah. who That's Luann's daughter. Okay. She's an artist. Yeah. She's beautiful in person. Yeah. And she's, you know, doing very well. And then so is her son. Yeah. Very good looking and a full-blown artist, like selling art pieces, like real artists. And, um, but Luann... Luann, I think, is such a great catch because she's like very capable. Like oh, she yeah. like can cook, she can drive a boat, she, she can, can like sing. Fix, she, she can sing, she can fix shit. Whatever. She kind of can do a lot, even though she's the countess. She's kind of like not really snobby. Yeah. Not like, you know, because she comes from such like capable means. Yeah. Now, Sonia is hilarious and goofy, but I feel like if you had to find them both somebody, I yes. think Sonia would be more of a challenge unless you're going for like a younger, thirsty, fun guy. I don't think she's going to get another age appropriate, like, or, you know, or like even if someone not age appropriate, I mean, like, like even if it's like late 40s to 60. OK, like I don't think 
I think it would be hard to find that guy for her because she is so messy. I will take on that challenge. Okay. I think that- But she's beautiful and she's I, funny. I've spoken with her daughter who now lives in LA. Yeah. Um, and her daughter is phenomenal. And I think that everyone wants her to see her with a supportive, amazing guy Let her who lets her be her uh, you know, eccentric self. Do you that think- Do you think- Sonia. But do you think if the camera, I do think there is something I call, She's which kooky. is like She's kooky. reality show Tourette's, okay? Yeah. Where I feel <laughs> that sometimes they've been doing it for so long. And for some of these people, if you do the math, it's like literally a fourth of their life has been in front of the for camera. For sure, for sure. And for some, it's coming close on half. Yeah. And you're like, I can't blame them for acting crazy when the cameras aren't around. And now- Essentially, cameras are always around because everyone has a phone. Yeah. So whether she's spreading her legs and showing her, you know, puss yeah. or whatever, yeah. um, someone's filming it, you know, and it's like, and it's funny and they're, they're filming it because they love her and we're not like bagging on her. But you kind of wonder like, would she ever be able to retreat to just a regular life and like want to make dinner for a man or have him make dinner for her? Like have that without the world watching because it becomes such a thing, you know? Right. Look, I think that she has a public persona that is all of those things. Right. I'm not going to say that's why we love her. I think we love her because she also really cares. She's also very charitable. I mean, she does a lot of amazing good work in New York City yes. and like all over the world. Yeah, she totally has a big heart. And then one of the reasons I liked Crappy Lake, and I told Luann this too, is I thought they were like a good match to do even other things together. Yeah. Because- with with people that have been watching the shows for as long as I have, um, you some you know some stars you're like that you don't like them anymore. You liked them and you're like, ooh, they really are a hypocrite or they really are an awful person. You know, the two of them never in the history of being on TV, they had funny silly moments. They had arguments with people, but none of them ever acted in like a mean malicious manipulative, mm -hmm. I got you, mm -hmm. I'm gonna hold this nugget of truth and throw it in your face right. and humiliate. They, they've had that done to them, yeah. but they've never done it to anybody. So like their hearts are pure. Yeah. And like, that's why I think they have, have longevity yeah. in doing other things, whether it's not housewives or other things. And why I think that they will but, find okay. love again as a if they want it. But as a Bravo fan, would you not want to see 12 episodes and like one ef every episode is two or three of your favorite Bravo people actually not just going on dates. Yes, We've seen absolutely. those shows before. No, absolutely. The problem is these people, generally speaking, you know, we think that they're so kooky on camera. Most of them, the ones that I've met, and the ones that I'm friends with are like that in the real world. So these yes. they are a personality type that are very eccentric, over the top in every single way, and maybe rough around the edges, harder to be in a relationship, yes. not the kind of average person. Yeah, and right? I've hung out with them too, and they're the, they are what you see. They are what you see. Yeah, it's not an act. Yeah, and they're which is why they're is which is why they're successful at doing what they're doing because some of these people come on these shows and they've studied it and they're or they get to a place where they do have to bring it. To stay on the show. Yeah, and I feel sure. like, you know, some of these people that are really like all star reality stars don't have to do that. No, you know? No, no. no. Um, but, I, but I yes, want to but I yes, want to see that please. show. I yeah. want to see that show where we not just send them out on amazing dates, because look, again, we can find great people for these if they're not ready. So let's talk to Sonia and figure out why you act the way you act in these situations. Is that really who you are? Is it exaggerated for the cameras? What truly are you looking for in a relationship? Are you harboring? Because she feels so much like a Morgan, right? She is a Morgan. Well, but I she's think so for connected. her, I think she her story is very interesting. That I feel like she's never really like sat down and been really frank about it. Mm -hmm. You know, the fact that she, you know, she came, I think, from a nice house, but she was like at Dorinda said, "You were the hostess with the most." <laughs> like, she was yeah. like a young girl working in fashion, and she was a hostess at a fancy restaurant, like a lot of twenty somethings or whatever does, and she met successful guys and she wanted to meet successful mm -hmm. guys and she fell in love with this guy that was like 35 years older than mm -hmm. she has the daughter and i think why she cries about it is i think she took advantage of the situation thinking that he would always be around and i think she was having such a great time having fun and this is just all the stories i've heard so i'm kind of writing it in my right i think right, she right. was having fun not necessarily cheating or anything but not being an attentive wife. Mm -hmm. And she went off and gallivanting on yachts and things, thinking he's fine. He has, you know, the housekeeper and whoever, and I'm doing this for a week and it, we're fine. And 
What wasn't fine is that her friend went and started giving him attention and right. then they broke up. And I think she really that kind sound of like a scandal. It. A little scandal, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think so. She has because a daughter was involved. So are you saying that I think her she best friend it. slept what with her I've husband? What I heard from all the remember what I, it, it's somebody she knew, maybe not a best friend, somebody she knew, and then he ended up Married. being with that woman, oh. and you know. And it was very final and it wasn't a nice divorce and he, he wasn't friendly with her after. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because he was so rich and everything, the other thing is, you know, when you marry someone that has, that comes from multiple, multiple wealth, there's a trust, there's trust. So homes are in trust and things. It's not like if my husband and I broke up, everything we came together, we both 50, came 50. from nothing. Right. Like we both, the house is in both our names. We yeah. both, you know, contributed to the mortgage. That's why you're not getting divorced. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm saying- <laughs> Too but expensive. But also I think sometimes people marry someone really wealthy thinking that right. they're going to make, out, even with a a prenup, they think they're going to, you know, they're living in a $20 million house. Well, guess what? When you get divorced, you're not walking away with 10. Right. That is in the trust and- they yeah. and his income is a hundred thousand a year, and like there's all these things for sure. So I think she did fine being divorced from him, but it wasn't the life that she was living had she stayed married with him with yeah. all the connections and all that stuff. And I think there's times as much as she really has made the most with this whole other career and people Huge. love her. She did a great job. There's times when she's vulnerable and probably a little buzzed on camera where she's like, you know, this wasn't supposed to be my life, Dorinda, too even though Dorinda was a widow. Like, this wasn't supposed to be my well, life. But, I was supposed to be this society person going on four, four different fabulous tropsies. She, trops a, she you can know, still be. I think, yes. like, the, the persona that we're seeing is, I'm a Morgan, I'm a Morgan, I'm a Morgan. That's great, but who is Sonia? Yeah. Like, we know Sonia Morgan, who you are on TV, but I think that she needs to figure out who she is as a woman, as a mother, and what she wants, because for her to be so connected to her husband and his legacy and his family's legacy means that she's at a bit out of an identity loss. Yeah. And so it's hard for her to get into real serious relationships because if she doesn't know who she is, how is she going to be successful in a loving, caring relationship? So she needs coaching. I think yeah. a lot of these people need coaching. So doing a, some kind of a matchmaking show without the coaching misses the whole point where if you're not ready for love, if you're not really wanting to understand why you're not in a relationship and work on some of those things, it won't be successful. Yeah. Yeah. I, okay, Andy Cohen, are you listening? Yeah. Okay, what do, who do you want for Andy Cohen? <laughs> right. So, okay. The thing is, he is a ultimate executive producer. He has an amazing career. He's made the careers of so many people, but he likes control. And so for him to be successful in a relationship, he needs to take a beat and let someone else also have some control. Planning a date, where to go, what but to do, who thing. to see. Now, maybe you know, because you're in the dating world, you're also a gay married man. Um, he has never, and that I know of, had any significant relationship in the last 20 years or has he that I don't know about? I think from what I know- I mean, listen, we, yeah. know, he gets, okay, he, we uh, know he gets guys- John Arthur dates, Hill. John Arthur Hill. Who is like his now like platonic best friend, yeah. co-host, yeah. whatever. Look, so they had something. But yeah. since that guy, which by the way, and I think it was so smart that he- you know, um, became a father when he did, wasn't waiting for a partner, didn't Agreed. share it with Agreed. somebody that, that then you could have a horrible custody battle yep. like our friend Jeff Lewis has had. Um, or, so I, yeah. I think with women too, like I think that is all good. Like do your thing. I think it's a smart thing to do. You, you want to be a, a parent at a certain age range, right? Um, but I'm, yeah, I would love, I mean, I would love to see him he with somebody more long term, but I do think it's still a crazy life. I think he's getting out of the crazy life of like having a late night show, having guys I'm sure throw themselves at him. That's the big problem. Yeah. So, you know, we can resist anything but temptation. Right. And when you're in that position, when you're a football player at your prime, when you're a you know professional athlete at your prime, every woman wants you, throws themselves at you. When you're a famous celebrity, this is what happens. This is what's happening and has happened to him. And I was just thinking like the last like, 20 years. I mean, I don't think there's a more popular gay guy that has power that gay guys, I mean, not only will gay guys love the shows you've been associated with, yeah. you're fun, you're cute, 
And that's why I think he needs to go into the totally opposite direction. He can't be with anyone in entertainment. I don't I think that's gonna be much harder for him. Yeah. I think getting someone that loves what he's built, you know, you have to take a step back and understand that these are people. Yeah. They are going to live and they're gonna die and they're gonna maybe have kids, but they're regular people who also have emotions and really just wanna be in relationships. Yeah. I really would love to see him in a long term committed relationship if that's what he wants. Yeah. You know, we all start we kind yeah, of not everybody world. does too either. No. I know, believe like, that he does. Uh -huh. I believe that he does from the people that I that I know know him very well. He does want that. I think he's I think scared of commitment. I think especially once the kids are even past a little bit of the baby stage, like once yeah. they're like at school and you have a bit of a breather and you have a bit of a routine. Yes. I think he would probably really enjoy to have someone have dinner with him every night or whatever, yeah. you know? Look, and who knows, you know, what what a long-term relationship looks like for everyone, especially if you're in the LGBTQ right. community, it looks different. You know, you could be polyamorous, you could be in a committed relationship, you could be in an open relationship or anything in between. So what about Kyle? Is Kyle a lesbian? Did she dip? Did, did she? Did she just have That's a little? That's a nice pivot. Uh, did she just have a little fun for a minute? Did did she and and Mauricio have more of a open swinging relationship throughout the years, and were a little more open sexually to things? Maybe they enjoyed threesomes. Maybe this wasn't the first girl she got with, or maybe it was all an act. And like I said before, she just stole a storyline from Selling Sunset. And, yeah, and you know, for and, sure. and just yeah. did it for fun, and also really adores this girl, Morgan, and has a financial interest in her career, which she does. And I think, you know, when we have clients come through the door, we say we want, you know, a lot of people are coming through, they've been in relationships, it hasn't worked out, they've been on these apps, I've been on some dates, but they basically feel bad about their experiences. And oftentimes they come with a view of scarcity. Like there's no one gonna be for me. I have very low self-worth, or no one's gonna find me attractive at mm. my age, or, I have kids or, or I don't have a lot of money, so who's gonna want me? And we don't think about the world in terms of abundance. And a lot of people would find me attractive because I have these 10 amazing qualities. Who wouldn't wanna be with someone like me? I'm a great mom, I have great family relationships, I have a great stable job. And so what we do at our company is we try to re-educate a person and to say, look, you're an amazing person. Let's tell you what your accomplishments are because sometimes when someone else tells you how great you are, you start to internalize and becomes your new narrative. Right. And then that helps you out when you're going on dates because you realize your worth. If you don't think you're worth it, it's gonna be very hard to be in a loving and caring relationship. Yeah, I love So the that. coaching part is really key. Yeah, absolutely. And you don't see that really on television. Yeah. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed talking to you. Tell everybody <laughs> where they can follow you and find all your stuff. Yeah, so if you go to Talkify.com or Talkify on Instagram, you can find the company. Adam Cohen Azlati, C-O-H-E-N-A-S-L-A-T-E-I is my Instagram handle. I'm certified, verified, what have you, so you'll can find me there. Um, I share a lot of dating and relationship tips, and hopefully some of your favorite Bravo Lebs will be working with us soon. Yes, so. I love it. Well, I and I hope they listen and take my advice, though I know nothing. But yes, and if they let us film it, I would totally film it. But right now, we're uh, we're under the radar. Yes, awesome. <laughs> Thank you.